Hi, this is Mike Brown, owner of Death Wish Coffee Company. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast. I love Jeff, but he left Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D-Man. Welcome everybody to Fueled by Deathcast. It is lucky number 111. <gasps> I oh guess go play the lottery or something, right? Wait, really? No, I don't know. Would you? Have you ever played the lottery? Yeah, and I lose every time I do, so I don't usually play the lottery. Do you play it a lot? No. Is this a thing I don't know? That no, you- <laughs> no, I probably played the lottery... I don't know, in my entire lifetime, and we're talking the numbers lottery, I've yeah. I probably played it six times in my entire lifetime. You know, like when it's like, mega millions, a billion dollars, That's you That's the win. thing, it gets, it gets it. so huge yeah. sometimes. I, I, I think there was one time John Swedish talked everybody into yeah. throwing down money into a pool, and then I started fantasizing about all the things I do with the money, and then when I lost, I was like, this is just a terrible thing to do to yourself yeah. over and over I've again. never been into it. My dad, though, my dad um, used to play the lottery every day. I, uh, You know, he would play the same numbers, like one of those people, you know, like, you know, here are the, he would play two different tickets uh, with the same numbers every yeah. single day, and, yeah. you know, he'd win sometimes. Really? Sometimes he'd lose. Most huh. of the times he'd lose. But yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, how, that's how the house always wins, Jeff. Episode 111, maybe the house won't win. Maybe we win. I we, don't know. Maybe we're the house. Maybe we're the house. A- anyway, <laughs> I know for a fact I am the incredible Jeff. And I am the house. <laughs> Says the amazing <laughs> D-Man. And uh, we'd love it if you guys took a second and followed us on social media. It's very easy to do. First and foremost, I am at Jeff Wish Coffee. And I am at... Death Wish Dustin. And you can follow the show on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter over on at Fueled by Deathcast across all those platforms. We're trying to do some fun stuff over there. And uh, I, I noticed you've been doing a lot more fun stuff on the Instagram account. Yeah. Like, I don't know, you're just posting more, and like I'm seeing more about our past guests. And, yep, like, it's... yep. And now I'm st- doing some stories, which is good. Yeah, and, I see uh, that. And um, like I said, the Twitter is more about engaging with our past guests and what they've been up to, yep, which is yep. a lot of fun. And Facebook is just a free-for-all. You guys want to talk to us? That's the place to go. Go to our, over on at Fuel by Deathcast I'm over on Facebook, and I try to post sporadically about what we're doing. I really want to get into um, behind the scenes. Right, right, right. And we'll right. get to there. I, I, want to, I want to do some fun stuff with behind the scenes, but I don't want to force it. I don't right. want to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're here. Yeah, you know, I like, know, right? <laughs> but we'll, we'll, get to the, we'll get to some fun stuff over there. Let us know what you want. Follow us on any social platform. Interact with us. Tell us what you want to see from the show. Um, but if you're not using social media to follow Christian Slater, God, you're just doing it wrong. Yeah. That, why else was there social? It, social media was invented for the sole purpose of following our Lord and Savior, Christian Slater. Oh, <laughs> Christian Slater. We love Christian Slater. We hope you do too. If you don't, um, it's okay. But my brother, you still go follow my brother him. asked me the other day, he was like, what is up with the Christian Slater <laughs> thing? I was like, honestly, Rob, I don't know. I don't either. I don't know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> we're going to keep invoking his name until he comes on this show. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. happen. We're going to break the universe. Um, and as always, thank you to our good friend and the, the voice of death, Brock Powell. BrockVox.com. He's a voice actor on this show and a thousand voices out there in the world. Go check out everything he's got to offer, BrockVox.com and at BrockVox across all social media. Speaking of friends of the show, though, I really want to shout out, if you guys are fans of podcasts, um, one of our good friends has started not one, not two, but three separate podcasts out now from Ricky Rackman. And you might know Ricky Rackman as um, the host of MTV's Headbangers Ball, also as one of our guests, episode, I don't know, 30-something. I was surprised you were just going to throw that out there. Episode 30-something, it's out there. Um, you can find that. We, we talk about Headbangers Ball. We talk about Ricky's ride. We talk about all the cool stuff the that he does. The house. But yeah, one of the first podcasts that he came out with is called The Cat Ho- The Cat house hollywood podcast and it is a very short and sweet podcast about 15 to 20 minute episodes where ricky regales a story about well, some night at the cat house and episode three just hit this week and there it's a bombshell it's all about how the feud between axel rose and vince neal for or, or yeah vince neal from from motley Crue started i didn't realize there was a 
feud. I'm oh, yeah, so yeah. outside of that. And it loop. started at the cat house, which is crazy. And you're gonna get that every was it, single Was it time. over a chick? Gotta listen. Was, was it over a chick? Though? You gotta listen. And <laughs> I just it, want an answer. Just listen to Ricky's <laughs> Ricky's podcast. You can't give me a fucking. It's answer. really great. To, it's really great because it's um, short, digestible episodes, and it's. Sometimes he has guests on there that were there at the time, yeah. and it's really, really fun to listen to because I would have loved to have been in that club. I was too young and all, all across the country at the time that the club was happening, but boy, does it sound crazy in there. Yeah, and it's one of those things like when it's happening, not everybody really knows about it. It's afterwards that you hear about it. Like Those things could be going on right now somewhere, Death Wish Coffee, and we don't even know it's happening. It's the truth. And the greatest thing about this podcast uh, with the Cat House as well is, is he had a strict no camera policy. You have to remember, this is back in 86 when not anybody had smartphones with yeah. cameras on them anyways. That wouldn't fly nowadays. But still, no cameras allowed. So there is literally no recollection other than the people that were in there. And 80% of those people were drunk and high. So it's very, very hard to remember a lot of these stories anyways. It's weird. It's, it's that relationship with a camera where it's like you regret not taking pictures, but would you have had the same moment if you were taking pictures the whole goddamn time? No, not even close. And yeah. so definitely tune into that. Also coming out from Ricky is uh, two other epi- or two other podcasts. One is literally called 19 Mi- Minutes with Ricky and Leah, and that's Ricky and Leah Vendetta. They just finished up their Ricky's ride to stop soldier suicide, um, uh, their motorcycle ride across the country, and now they're just uh, shooting the shit on a podcast. They're both incredible people with a lot of stories to tell. That's a lot of fun, too. And finally, the third um, podcast that he's coming out with isn't even out yet. It's called One Foot in the Gutter. And I'm really excited for this one because this he's doing as a long-form podcast in the vein of Fueled by Deathcast. He's doing it as a guest-based podcast where he, because Ricky knows a ton of people yep. from the comedy world, the music world, the NASCAR world, and, and everywhere else, mm-hmm. and he's going to invite them on and just shoot the shit with them, talk to them about what they do, kind of like what we do yep. on this podcast as well. So that's a lot of fun. So definitely tune into all those. You'll be able to find them, obviously, on iTunes and Spotify and wherever else you find podcasts. Secret code unlocked. Discount of death. Do you guys know by now? Yeah, Do you guys, know? you have to know. Discount of Jeff. <laughs> Deathwishcoffee.com. It, it, the discount code that you can use every single week for 12% off is discount of death, all one word, on deathwishcoffee.com. That's 12% off of every single purchase you use. But uh, by a slip of a tongue on, an, on a previous episode, we did say discount of Jeff, and you made that into a discount I, code. I see you three people that actually <laughs> use that code. So, so we have a war now between discount of death and discount of Jeff. Pick which one you'd rather use and use that for 12% off on deathwishcoffee.com. And we got, a lot, we got a lot of cool things going on the page you can use that Holy for. We got a lot of mugs. Cool. We got a lot of mugs coming. Um, we have a lot, you know, we have the hooks, we have, I mean, the chocolate might not be around for... No, it's come, uh, yeah, yeah, but we're doing more with that this year. We're doing some surprises. I was told by... There's still kettles left? Yeah. I was told by the, some of the, some of the merchandise that we're doing, like, for summer and fall this year, blew my mind. Blew my mind. And you know what? Discount of death? De- death? <laughs> Discount yeah. oh, of... I gotta make no, another one. <laughs> not gonna make another one. <laughs> Discount of death will work. 12% off all year round. Every single purchase you guys want to make, 12% off. What are you waiting for? Deathwishcoffee.com. Get there. This week, D-Man, um, it's somebody we've got on the show that I've been wanting to have on our show for a while, and our schedules have never really lined up. We finally got him. Artist Rob Pryor. Rob, we met a couple years back now at a Walker Stalker event. Yes. Um, because he does all the Fan Fest events, and um, he is... Best known now for being a pop culture artist, and he does a lot of live art yeah. on stage with both hands. It's insanity. Metal music blaring, head banging, just like it is It is a performance. And this guy does it, you know, with other musicians and performers. Jay-Z, Linkin Park. It's incredible. And... um We've gotten the chance to moderate some of his panels. I'll have some of that in this episode as well. But we sat down with Rob, talking to him um, over Skype from his studio in L.A., and he talked about some of the stuff he's been working on. He talked about how he broke into art, where he was doing um, magazine covers for like yep. heavy metal and stuff like as, that. As an underage artist, yeah. allegedly. Yeah, and um, how he you know, was just an artist who wanted to just 
work. And that's what he does is he works hard doing what he loves to do. Not only art, he's worked in sculpture. He's worked in special effects for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's crazy. He's worked on stage with some of the biggest names in music. It's incredible the amount of stuff that he gets to talk about. Plus, he gave us a surprise um, sneak peek of his gallery show that's going to be touring this year called, um, or I forget exactly what it's called, but it's it, it it's all about Stan Lee where he has drawn Stan Lee into iconic comic book covers, and it's really, really cool. There's so much awesome in this episode. I'm going to shut up so you guys can hear it. Mugs up this week for this week's death guest, artist Rob Pryor. Enjoy. The Fueled by Death Guest. Rob, let's start kind of at the beginning because I think um, for a lot of people who are just meeting you for the first time, I think it's a, a very interesting uh, origin story of yours kind of because you're you're not the traditional artist and the way you got into art is not really a traditional track. Can you talk a little bit about it, like how you got into creating art? Sure. I mean, it, originally you said in the beginning, so I was like, well... First, there was light. <laughs> and no, I, um, I, was, I was born into being an artist. I really I actually didn't have a choice. Um, my parents, you know, before I was born, you know, met with my grandparents and they were like, uh, yeah, he's going to be an artist. My entire family line are artists, but none by profession. Wow. So they were like, that's it. That is your chosen living. There you go. You know, I got to tell you, there are times that I fired like, Hey, maybe maybe if I, I'm a cop, and they're like, "Nope, fireman, nope." <laughs> Can I do good in the world? Nope. All Just right. fucking draw, kid. All right. Um, and uh, no, but that was that was it. They, um, you know, they started training me before I could walk. They would, you know, put crayons in my hand, teach me circles, triangles, squares, you know, everything. Wow. And um, so yeah, that sort of. That's that's how that's how it all began. Um, I was practicing with like oil paints and char charcoal and chalk and stuff at five. Wow. wow. And then so uh, your method is to create art with two hands. And I mean, I, I want to. I don't know how to paint any other way. Right. Um, when did that kind of start for you? Uh, um, when did you start using both hands to create? Um, when I was a, I was born right handed. So when I got to be about oh, 10 years old, um, I, I thought, what if I lose my right hand? That's I'm done. A, that's a normal thought for a 10-year-old. It is. You know, I, I think most 10-year-olds, you know, are, are going, hmm, what if I lose my right hand? <laughs> what if I drive a race car off of a cliff? Mm -hmm. um, no. Uh, so I, I thought, well, you know, fuck it. I'm going to switch. So I switched my hands. I made my left hand my dominant hand. Like for the next couple of years, I refused to use my right hand as my dominant hand. So I switched playing guitar. I switched throwing a football, throwing a baseball. I, I switched it all. Wow. And um, my grades were like, because, you know, they couldn't, couldn't even read my name on the corner of the paper anymore. They're like, who is this blob? <laughs> Me. Um, and... Uh, so, yeah, my parents were at that point, they were like, why are you doing this? This is, you know, don't don't sw switch back, switch back. And I refused. And um, so I was published at 13 and internationally published at 15. And somewhere somewhere before I got published, uh, even locally, um, I had math homework due and I had I had a painting due. Mm. And uh, well, it was actually it was my first. It was a local publishing job. And uh, I, so I picked up two brushes just, just to sp speed things up. And I was like, oh, I could do this. And then I realized I can do my math homework and, and the painting at the same time. You know, I can, I can paint two paintings at one time. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was sort of the impetus of it. I was just like, I can, I can do it. And that was it. And you never looked back. Fuck no. <laughs> uh, you know, it drives my wife crazy every now and then because even like when i'm cooking in the kitchen i'm consistently doing two to three uh, things at one time i'm like flipping eggs yeah. and unscrewing jars and is there is there a hand that does math better anymore <laughs> i can barely add two and two i remember when i used to be good at math and now i'm like i can't tie my left shoe uh um so yeah i think um 
my I sign both hands and I write both hands. Um, and it's they're completely different signatures. Mm-hmm. Except for if I start a signature with my right hand and finish with my left hand, uh, my left hand will finish it like my right hand signs it. Oh, that's so and wow. vice versa. I know it's really weird. I was I uh, uh, a hand signature uh, or signature analyst came to me and he was like, "I want you to try this," and I tried it and he was like, ah, "I've never seen that." Wow. So yeah. So when you said you got published at fifteen, where where was that? Where did how did that come to be? How did you get published so so young? Um. I was sending my portfolio out. My dad was pretending to be me. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there'd be a phone call that would come in. I I was working for um, uh, TSR at the time, Dungeons & Dragons at the time. Nice. And a few others. I mean, there was. I I worked for them. I worked for Steve Jackson Games. I worked for a bunch of gaming companies. And um, so a call would come in, and they'd be like, this is the deadline. And my dad would be like, oh, yeah, I think we can meet this deadline. He'd look at me, and he'd go, can, can we meet that deadline? And uh, that was it. Wow. Yeah, when I was, I think when I was about seventeen, maybe sixteen, they they sort of there's a bunch of companies found out that you know, and it, by then it was just too late. I mean, they were like, no, fine, we'll figure a way around it and do it. Wow. Oh, what? So they yeah. found out that it was actually some... a minor. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nobody got and, in any uh, trouble or anything. No, I mean, we ended up finding our way around it. You know, uh, I thought I was going to lose all the jobs and everything. And uh, they were like, no, this is good because now you can come to conventions and you can or, you know, meet people and, you know, we'll we'll figure a way around it. They were like, this is this is actually pretty good. Wow. So did you enter into the convention world pretty young then? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was doing conventions and stuff in high school. Wow. And, um you know, my, my job, instead of going to, you know, work a second job or, 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 you know, a job after school would be just to paint and, you know, and draw and do like illustrations for, for magazines and books and stuff. So, so you're probably one of the, like the perfect people to ask about the, I don't know, the progression of the con world, you know, in the last 20 years, like what it started as and what it's turned into. It started as it's just fans, man. Especially with especially with like Dungeons and Dragons, it wasn't about celebrities. It wasn't about you know any of that. I mean, the celebrities at, at that time were like, you know, who's a professional Dungeons and Dragons player? That's you know, <laughs> um, and uh, it was the artists and, and stuff like that. And over the years, um, I watched you know comic conventions turn from comic conventions to media conventions. Yeah, and. Um, you know, like San Diego Comic Con when it first, man, it used to be, God, it was so great. Like all the artists, we'd all go, you know, play card games and stuff together after the con, and you know, drink beers and get wasted. Well, maybe, maybe in high, well, no, in high school I was doing that too. But um, <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, I, who knows? Maybe I, mean, I don't quite remember. Uh, <laughs> I do not recall. How can you draw with two hands? Lots of drugs. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and but yeah, I, uh, so, and then it just changed. And over the years, it, you know, then it became like, you know, games and video game, you know, video game world started popping in a bit more. And then some TV celebrities, you know, would show up like Lee Majors, you know, and all of that. And then it just morphed and morphed and morphed until it became what it is today, which is, uh, you know, let's face it, it really is a uh, a multimedia show. Yeah. You know, you can't even call them comic conventions, really. Yeah. Um, which is fine. I mean, look, everything everything has its progression. Uh, I miss the old days of, you know, just being able to go and see, you know, a ton of artists and, you know, stuff like that. Um, which I got to say, the one thing that, uh, not the one thing, I, I love a lot of things that they do, but the... Uh, Guys at uh, Heroes and Villains and Walker Stalker, man, tons of art, tons yeah, and yeah. tons of art. Yeah, they're really, really a, uh, all about that, which is great. Uh, were you always a fan of, like, I guess we, as we call it in today, like, of geek culture? Because you said you started working for, like, Dungeons and Dragons. Fuck, and stuff yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, totally, right? God, man, I, you know, I collected comics. Um, you know what really sucks, though, is I had, like, the ultimate comic collection that would probably be worth, like, 
you know, a million today. Seriously, I had those kind of books. And somewhere in high school, like the end of high school, I, I sold it for beer money. Oh, know? my gosh. I know, right? I was like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't need Spider-Man number one. I'll let it go. Oh. I'm like, now I think back on it and, you know, I'm like, fucking <laughs> moron. Um, but, uh, but, dude, I've always, been a, I've always been a fan. In fact, uh, I was just talking yesterday. You know Sideshow Collectibles? Love oh, yeah. those guys. We, we actually we oh, were my at God. that facility and we did, we did a couple shows with them as well. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I've been in a facility like yesterday and a couple other times, and we're working on some projects that, we, that I can't really say just yet, but yeah. we're working on them together. Excellent. And um, I was talking with uh, one of the owners, Tom, and and we were talking about how things have changed and what you know, how all of this is you know, it's just sort of morphing into into this this crazy world, and uh, and their their toys are the collectibles. God, don't call them toys. Uh, <laughs> sculptures. Their sculptures are just dope, man. dude. They're, there's nobody better. There's period. nobody. No, better. not even close. And that's no. Really- that's really cool that they got you to kind of collaborate with because I mean I, I can't I can't even imagine what it's gonna be like I'm so excited man there's like there's literally four or five projects um, wow that and then they're gonna step on to this yeah you know I think I told you guys a little bit about the Stan Lee thing right I don't think so ah uh, it's you guys are getting literally uh, the advanced uh, literally the advanced word on this okay um, it just popped out if you type in rob Pryor stanley memorial at the end of this month uh-huh it, you'll everywhere yeah. um i'm doing a stanley gallery show that stan signs you know most of most of the paintings and we, he was like he'd wake up every day and he'd want to work on them sign them and yeah so we were working on it with i was working on it with him oh, wow. and uh, it was the last thing he ever did was the working on my stuff Wow. I know. It's crazy, right? Um, so that's going to be a gallery show? It's going to be a gallery show. Um, that won't be until April. Okay. And um, we're, we're, we're finishing up the venues. We're finishing up paintings. Like, literally, I'll take you around the studio, and you'll see half-finished half uh, paintings of, of, like, Stan Lee stuff. And n- almost nobody knows about it yet. The very first people that are going to see it, besides, like, you guys and stuff like that, Live will be on the thirtieth at the memorial. There'll be six or seven paintings framed. Oh wow! And it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be the very first. And then we've got a tour planned for it. We'll be L.A., New York, Florida. I think Florida. Yeah. Um, London, Dubai, and maybe Australia. Oh wow! And so the gallery itself, the whole show is gonna is gonna tour all the world. Oh yeah! Oh, that's excellent. So yeah, here I'll 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 start. Yeah. Okay, you're you're moving around the studio now, but Oh wow. So Wow, look at that. So That's so rad. It's Stan oh. as pretty much every every character in every book and all from the, the the best books. And here I'll give you a quick tour of the studio. You guys can say hi to Gnome and Cat. Hi guys. What's up? Uh um, so yeah, this is the studio and, uh, these are all stand paintings waiting to be finished. Oh, so cool. And so, yeah, here. How many pieces are going to be in the, oh, the wow. show? Look at the Spider-Man. That's so That's good. That's so good. Oh! Or is, oh my God. Do you know how, the total number of pieces that are going to be in the show? 66. Wow, wow. That's a lot. That's awesome. Um, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Oh wow! The Infinity Gauntlet. And he got the chance to see a lot of this b- before he passed away, right? That's what you were saying. Yeah, he well, he signed them. Like, oh right wow! There. Oh god, that's so great. So yeah, let's see. Ghost Rider. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's so good. So here, and, and uh, I'll take you very quickly into the back room. Mm. Uh, there we go. So yeah, this is you know all the stuff that's hanging. Oh wow! But so yeah, just to get you an idea. Oh um, yeah, just 
These are all of the stand pieces right now, and everything that's up there goes into storage and hot, hot, cold, hot and cold storage stuff that's going to go out to galleries. Then all the stand pieces are going to go to the, the galleries. But uh, I don't know if you guys remember uh, Marvel did a uh, Star Wars. Yep. Comic. Oh yeah, I got I, yeah the, yeah. Oh, oh, it is the number one. There it is. It's awesome. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> So it's it's basically me painting after all of the other artists. Right. So, you know, so it's Rob Pryor after, you know, Steve Ditko yeah. or Rob Pryor after uh, Jim Steranko or, you know, any of that. So that is the um, that's the secret show. That's, that's so the one that... cool. So when you t- when you say you're going to take it on tour, are you going to go on tour with these, or is it just going to be? I'll go to the beginning of every single opening of every single show, and I'll do a live painting while I'm that's there. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Because that's that's so exciting to see you work. I mean, your work is exciting to to, to look at, but to see you work is even more exciting. So, you know, it's so weird because you know, if you just said if you just said that seven years ago or yeah, about seven years ago, I would have been like, "Fuck you! I'm <laughs> not going to paint live. That's never going to happen." Whatever. <laughs> um, so, well, you did. I did men- hear you mention out of the cities that the tour is going to go to. You got, you're coming to New York City, right? Oh yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah. maybe we can come down and and uh, and see you in person for for at the at the gallery show because that's hop, skip, and a jump away from where we're based. We're in, we're in upstate New York, so that'd be that'd be. Oh, amazing. dude, yeah, I would I would I would hope you guys could come on down for that. that totally. Would be, God, that would be dope. Yeah, yeah. we'll bring some coffee. Um, It'll be a lot of fun. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it, you know, if I drink coffee, uh, it, you guys will see a whole other, <laughs> whole nother me. <laughs> I love it. Well, <laughs> speaking of, speaking of a whole other you, you, you kind of just alluded to this, uh, you, like, so live painting is relatively new for you, like seven yeah. years ago. Really? Where did that, where did you kind of get into the point where, oh, I'm going to give this a shot? Cause that's a tech that's nine, a, tech nine. Really? Yeah. Okay. Explain that a little bit. So, I did a book on one hit, on one of his albums. I did the book for it. Okay. Like a book, all his songs. So he right. give, send me the lyrics, and I do the the these illustrations to it, and all of that. And um, so, I went and painted at Strange Music, and that's that's their company. Yep. And it's this massive headquarters, and uh, so I I went and did that and painted for him and the crew and all of that. And so he's got this idea and he started calling me for like three months. He'd be like, Hey, do you want to paint on stage live with me? I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to do that. And finally he asked me, he goes, well, why not? And I go, I have stage fright. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, don't even worry about it, man. The lights will be in your eyes. You'll never see anyone. He fucking lied to my face. (laughs) Uh, I got there and I walked out and my first, the first thing I saw this sea of people, I'm like, there's no lights, there's no fucking lights, no lights. And, um, you know, it was like, it, you know, I call it the Charlie Brown moment. Cause all I started hearing was wop, 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 wop. and like all their heads were growing really big. And I was like, fuck. So I thought, you know, I, I can't, I can't do this. I'm going to go grab a bottle of Jack. I'm going to go cry in a corner and I'll apologize to him later. And, um, my, I turned to, to leave. Literally, I turned to turn off stage to walk off. And there's my wife. <laughs> Good wife. <laughs> and I was like, face my wife or face the crowd. I will take the crowd any day, <laughs> any day. And uh, and that was that was really it. That started it. And from then, I, I did a I did a few more shows with him, and then other bands, and you know. People started seeing it, and I started doing, you know, more and more and more shows. So, um, were bands contacting you at that point, or was it the other uh, way around? Yeah, no, bands were contacting me, wow. and um, you know, and I'm friends with a lot of musicians, you know, like guys from Shine Down, which I still haven't painted with yet, but some of my best friends. And mm-hmm. um, you're you're on stage with painting live with musicians do you do it for their entire set or is it oh just- yeah it, uh, I'll, I'll stay there for the the entire set and i'll paint usually it's a four foot by eight foot painting mm-hmm. um i've taken now to doing 
two paintings. So I'll do one on one side of the stage and then run across and then do another painting and then run across. So I'm doing two paintings. Um, at the Lincoln Park, one of the Lincoln Park shows, it was Lincoln Park and Steve Aoki. I, um, I painted, there was, there were, it was an eight foot painting, uh, two four foot paintings put together. I painted Steve Aoki on one and Lincoln Park on the other. Wow. And then at 20 minutes before the show was going to be done, they pulled the paintings apart and pushed up a new four foot by four foot blank. And it's the thing that tied the two together. And so in the last 20 minutes, I painted this, this sort of conduit between the two paintings. Wow. wow, that is so incredible. And you've gotten to do it, I know, with like the bands that you mentioned. And you also um, have mentioned to me before, you've been on stage with Jay-Z, right? Yeah. And um, most recently, did you do, and now correct me if I'm wrong, did you do a, um, a piece either for or with Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, I did it. I did it uh, of Jeff Goldblum, and we went and we went and uh, he saw it, and then we're talking about going and painting with him because he's he is a ridiculous musician. That just jazz ridiculous. album is crazy good. The one right? he just came out with, it's so oh my good. God. Um, so you're gonna get on stage with him maybe and do something? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's so exciting. We're, we're working that, and it's it's gonna be a little while just because my schedule is is insane because I also I also direct movies so. Um, so I'm going to be, I've got a movie I've got to direct this year in November. Just, it's just my, my life is insane, yeah. but we are, we're, we're planning it. We're, we're all in the talks of when it's going to be. He's in Europe right now, or he was in Europe. So it's when he can do something somewhat local, at least to start. Yeah. Then I'm going to jump in and we're going to do something. That's, but dude, he's cool. That's so he's a, cool. He's a, He's a cool cat. Uh, uh, I really like him. Well, I love watching you work live. It's it's so exciting and invigorating. And one of the things that I know when we've been able to moderate your panels that is a question you get all the time that I want to kind of open up for our listeners and and and, and everything too is is you. Um, not only when you're on stage with a band, but when you're not on stage with a band and you're doing it yourself live, you paint to loud music. And uh, yeah. and it, like, has that always been a thing? Um, with oh, yeah. music, creating creating art, you just can't do it in silence, right? No, I in silence I get in my own head, and then once you're once you're in your own head, you're you're your worst enemy most of the time. Yeah, and, I mean that goes with anything, mm -hmm. you know, really. Um, and so the louder the music, the more just out of my own head I can be. And I used to be primarily a, like a strictly a photo realist mm. and uh, back before Photoshop was prevalent, that dates me a bit. I, I like, I has to have, I have to have really loud music. Um, and you know, I prefer, you know, after a while, heavy metal rap, um, you know, stuff like that. But yeah. I mean, my playlist is really fucked up. I mean, you don't know what the hell is going to pop up. That's one true. Of, uh, one of my favorite moments is backstage with you as you're frantically getting your playlist together before hitting <laughs> the stage. It's one of my favorite moments. But um, I wanted to kind of ask, too, like you do. You do a lot of heavy metal, a lot of rock, a lot of rap. And um, you're creating, especially at like a like a comic book convention or like a Walker Stalker or something like that, you're creating, you know, something in, in that vein, you know, whether it's video games yep. or, or comic books or stuff. But I feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like the music affects the final product. Is that, oh, is that yeah. the case? Like if you were oh, to have yeah. a different playlist, it would look different, right, at the end? Every time. Yeah. Every time. It, it absolutely affects the, product, the final product because, you know, it, you know, the crazier the music, the sometimes the more, you know, frantic I paint or, you know, something like that. And, uh you know, if it's if it's rap, it's one thing. If it's heavy metal, if it, it's one thing. If it's death metal, it's another thing. Um, yeah, I, I kind of let the music just sort of dictate it most of the time. I think that uh, is so interesting in an artistic sense because here you are creating something with both hands, you know, and, and, and creating that in real time, but you technically have three brushes on that canvas because the music is another brush because you, because you really you're you're in the rhythm you're in what that brush what that music is is doing to your hands as you're as you're working and i think that that is an added layer that you don't even get in a lot. By, by the way, not just hands, the whole body. The whole I mean, body, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. You're there, you are dancing. Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Um in yeah, I just, uh, I, I, shit, I don't know how to do it any other way. And that's, I, I think that's the I best thing. Don't. 
Um, speaking of being so busy, you direct movies? Yeah, well, I, did, yeah I wanted yeah. to go back to I want to talk about I that. I didn't know anything about How'd that. How'd you get into doing that? Um, I directed my first movie last year, and, I, and then I just signed for a three-picture deal. Um, and I've got a couple pictures I'm still doing with the one that I did last year. What was the movie um, last year? Uh, it's well, it's just being edited right now. Oh, okay, it's, called, it's not out. It's called Painted Beauty. Um, yeah, it's not out yet. Um, the editor who did Get Out is editing it now. Oh, wow, cool. Great. very cool. And um, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, and it, you know, it's just a, a little you know a little movie, but I got I got the bug. You know, um, that's awesome. Was it something that you kind of always? were thinking about trying oh, or did you fall always. into it? Or? I mean, yeah. when I first moved to California, I really got heavy into into the business. Mm. Um, you know, I did storyboarding, movie posters. Um, fuck. I did everything. Mm. Uh, the last season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I did uh, I did just a ton of, of, of work on that. Um, With storyboard-wise like, or like... Creatures, sculpting, because I sculpt as well. Oh, oh my god! Wow. Um, and uh, wait, yeah. is, that, is that what you're doing for sideshow? Are you doing sculpting stuff for them? No, nope, <laughs> nope. Good try, good try. I like that, <laughs> yeah, Dustin. Good, good try. Good try. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I literally uh, two days ago for the stand thing, I got asked if I might do one of the pieces in sculpting form, oh and gosh. I might, I might go ahead and do that, um, depending upon time. Um, but I did that, you know, I did application, you know, way back then, I, you know, I, I art directed movies and I always wanted to direct. And so, so many years I was so close to directing and so close. And then finally I was just like, fuck this. I, my art career is doing what, what I needed to do. I'm done. I'm, I'm not even going to try anymore. And like sort of the, the minute I actually stopped you know, the, the opportunity came up and came to me wow. with, uh, uh, with a company out of China and, uh, same company I have a toy company with. Um, I don't know if you heard of like Funko or Pop Life. Yep. Yeah. The owner of that and I have a company together. That's a, that's a toy company. Oh, wow. Thank so you. I know I, I do a lot of crazy <laughs> shit. You just can't uh, stop. I do it. I can't stop. There's I, no, I so there's no retirement. There's no there's, dude. You know it's funny. I, I you know my wife and I always every year we're like, well, okay, you're on the five year plan. So for the past probably five years, I've been on the five year plan, and for the next ten years, I'll be on the five year plan. And you know, uh, no, there's just it's just I don't know what I do with myself. Yeah. You know, if I wasn't if I wasn't as, as crazy busy as I am. Um, you know, we have twin girls, four-year-old twin girls, and uh, you know, my wife always says that you know, had I not been ambidextrous, the universe wouldn't have come in and gone, "All right, let's see how you handle this shit." <laughs> Changing them um, both at the same time, feeding them both at the same noses. And, um, but yeah, so uh, and then the next one, my next film, will I'm gonna, I'll be filming in London, and uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Um, so I'm just really fortunate to, to do all the things that I love, man. That's awesome. Well, I, then that gets to the question that we come to on this show, and I, I'm dying to know. Through all everything that you do, through everything you've been able to achieve, accomplish in your career, and the stuff that you're still doing, like starting, learning, and all this stuff, what fuels you to keep doing it? What fuels you to keep creating? I'm never good enough. Ever, never, never, never. Uh, I, I don't believe that you ever, you ever. The minute you hit a plateau, that's death, man. That's death of that's the death of an artist. Because the minute you think that you're good enough uh, is when you stop trying to be better. Yeah. And so I look at everything and just go, I want to, I want to do it all. I want to learn it all. I, you know, I want to do more paintings every year. You know, um, I want to be able to turn out. You know, my goal right now is to hit over 400 paintings in a year. Holy wow. crap. That's my goal. Are you, are you close to that now? We're going to, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them and they're going, uh, uh. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to hit, 
I'll hit over 300 for sure this year. Wow. Do you know what you hit um, last year? Um, I think I want to say we were, it was 210 maybe. Wow. Something like that. Um, uh, Scott probably knows. Uh, Scott's not here right now, so I can't ask him. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd say I'd say over 200 last year. And this year is, it, it's going to be damn close to double that. Wow. So, yeah, because I have other gallery shows planned that, uh, <laughs> and everybody in the background is laughing. Like, they're also crying. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, a little, little bit of uh, death on the inside on that one. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's, there's, as we get, to, as we keep talking and I see, see you guys, there's, there's one, there's another show that I can't, I can't mention yet. That's fine. That I'm that's coming to an end this year. That I might be doing a uh, a gallery show with. Oh wow! So you know, we'll we'll leave it at that. All you right. guys can all right can figure that one out. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like uh, I'll be doing that. And fuck, <laughs> just bringing it, just doing it all. That's excellent. I mean, I, I what's great is is that you love. You love the business, you love the game, and you love what you get to do. And I think that's inspiring, you know, because, I mean, you could just be going through the motions and churning out two, 300 paintings a year, but you you really enjoy it. You enjoy your what you get to do and what you're put on this earth to do. And I think that's... that Every, every day, man. That's, every that's super day. inspiring. What um What's some advice you could give to somebody who's looking to, to, to create, to, to, to get out there and do it? Buy a taser and tase yourself daily. All right. No. <laughs> right um, check and check. <laughs> is, it weird that, is it weird that I'm already doing that and not creating a fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's bad um, advice, Rob. <laughs> damn it. Um, no, the biggest thing I'd say is, is most artists who you know come up to me, they're always like, yeah, I got turned down and I just stopped art. You know, if you're turning in artwork, you know, it, it's perseverance because if you can persevere, you know, just like with movies, I was like, you yeah, know, whatever, but I'd work my balls off on trying to do it. And so, you know, uh, you know, luck is preparation meets opportunity. So you've got to be prepared for it, um, you know, and so an artist needs to be prepared and if they're sending stuff to a to a art director to get hired, most people stop after maybe ten tries. But who knows? Maybe that maybe ten of those times that they sent it, they were the thousand south thousandth portfolio that day, or he woke up in a bad mood, or you know, or she has a hangover. You know, there's a million reasons to get turned down, mm -hmm. or just maybe you're not quite good enough yet, yeah. which you know. What, what I tell everybody to do is write the art director and say, hey, can you take two seconds and just tell me what, what, what it was about my portfolio? And what can I fix? Right. What can I do? And they might just say get better. I mean, or they might give a real gem of information, but no one's going to get better unless they you know, try to get better. And if you, if you stop sending, who knows that? If you send a portfolio a thousand times, you don't know. Maybe that it would be that thousand and first time that right. you finally get picked. Right. And so that's that's the biggest bit of advice. And um, and don't look at your work and go, I'm good. I'm good. I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm great. You can say I'm good, but don't look at your work ever and be satisfied because it's that that stops you from growing. Yeah. So strive, always strive to be better. And people notice that artists, art directors notice that all the time. I mean, you know, uh, when I first sent my portfolio out to TSR, I wasn't, I was rejected three times. Yeah. You know, um, I will say there was a book company that I, uh, I really wanted to work for. And this is the other thing is be creative. Uh, and I was like, how can I get them to open this box? So I took a battery pack. I took Christmas lights. 
and I wrapped it and then I saran wrapped it and I overnighted it to them. So it would still, you know, still be glowing when it got to there, flashing when it got to there. Of course they opened it. You know, that was a, that was way back in the day. Now they would probably. Yeah, it's a bomb. bomb. <laughs> yeah. But um, but that was that was just one of the ways that I got somebody to open one of my one of my portfolios. Yeah, that's well, smart. yeah, you know, you just keep trying. I think that's 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 something that's lost on a lot of people is, you know, because rejection can be crippling and it shouldn't be. It should be that fire that just c- try for that thousandth and first time, you know, like, yeah, like I, I think that's I think that's really, really cool. I'm curious, you know, would you ever advise anybody to attempt um, becoming ambidextrous like you did? I get asked that so many times, you know, and I get people that are like, look, I did this with my left hand. And here's the thing. If you're doing it to get noticed, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing it and you're really trying to have a career and you'd stop and you take the time to learn your left hand and use your left or right hand then you're taking time away from what's really important, and that is to learn your process. Um, That's what I always tell people is, yeah, it makes me faster, but I've been doing it, you know, since I was 10. So, you know, God, I've I've been, I literally have been doing it, you know, over 40 years. Yeah. And and so you, like you said, it's not, you didn't set out to go, I'm going to be an ambidextrous artist. You No, you, farthest you, thing from you, my head. A, mind. you had math homework to complete, and B, like, you just, it became your process, so you just embraced yeah. that. That's, that, I think that's, that's really cool. You know, and, and that's, and that's what I tell everyone, is like, don't do it just to do it. You know, if, if it really is something you're like, this is what I want to do, and it really helps me, then absolutely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dissuade anybody, you know, dissuade anybody from doing it. But I also wouldn't be the first person to go, yeah, do it because it's great. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, if I'm painting with one hand, just one, and I'm, it's completely locked down because I had, I had blown a tendon. So I had for three months, I could only use my right hand. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, I couldn't, I could barely finish a painting in five days. Wow. So, you know, don't, rather than create obstacles, create pathways. Yeah. That's, you know, that's really the thing. You've, uh, and I just wanted to ask, you've mentioned this to us before that you can do four paintings at once. You've done I can. That. Do you still, do, yeah. do you still attempt that from time to time? Yeah, not as much right now, just because <laughs> my, my studio space is, isn't there for it. But I'm actually, I, I just, funny, I just talked to my manager. He's going to put a separate wall in because I need to speed up, but he's going to put a wall in behind me, a, a portable wall behind my studio in my, in my painting space. Cause I uh-huh. have two big painting spaces and that way I can, I can, I can do that a bit more. It's more, it's right now it's more about logistics and how I'm set up and uh, I just didn't set myself up to do it. But yeah, I, I mean, I did it. I just went and painted in Africa and I set two paintings up, and I did I did two paintings at one time. I wanted to ask you about that. So how did how did that come to be? You going out to Africa to to, to do paintings? There is a group called Edge, uh-huh. um, and they're protecting elephants and rhinos and teaching village kids. You know, you don't have to go out and be a poacher. You actually have things you can do. So I went out and I I not only painted in the wild, which was <laughs> so fucking intense. I bet. Um, you know, because. I'll, hold on, I'll give you a story. Okay. But I also taught. I also was teaching, you know, village kids, you know, how, that they could paint. And the question I got from most of them is, "Wow, there's other things we can do." And I was like, "Absolutely, you can do anything you want to do if you want to do it bad enough." So, so I got to do that. But um, there was one point that I was drinking with some of the rangers because I was always surrounded by rangers when I would paint. Where in Africa was this again? Uh, Kruger, Kruger Park, okay. South Africa. Yep. Okay. And um, and it looks like, by the way, I'm, I might be going back to Africa with the BBC to do a documentary. Oh, oh wow! Cool. So yeah, that's 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 a that's a it's shaping up more and more daily. Wow. Um, but I uh, I was back and I was drinking with the Rangers and I'm at the end of a driveway and I heard this whimpering and I turn around and it's a fucking hyena. <laughs> now, how I pictured a hyena. And what I saw were two different things. I'm picturing this little dog thing from like Lion King, and they're yeah. like, yip, yip, yip. "That thing was that thing was like chest high, 
and easily the width of my shoulders, oh, if not God. more. And uh, I mean, it sloped down to. I mean, it was. It was. It's a really ridiculous looking animal. But uh, I was like, okay, this is how I die. Ooh, all right, cool. <laughs> Holy and crap. they told me, they, the rangers that were there sort of laughed, and they were like, they're scavengers, not hunters, so unless you got a corpse by your feet, you're safe. And I was like, that doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Oh, my gosh. That's that's such a cool experience, and I'm, I'm, I hope you do get to go back and, and do stuff with the I do. That's... I do. I want to I wanna be able to, to, to help the, you know, the kids out there, and I, do painting in the wild, there's, there was nothing like it. Yeah. There's nothing like it. It's so cool. Um, it's it's so crazy. Well, with everything that you've got going on, the stuff we talked about, the stuff we can't even talk about, um, <laughs> I, I just I uh, I want all of our listeners and viewers to be able to follow you and follow your journey. Where's the best way to do that? It would it be your website or would it be social media? Uh, well, you can go to my website, and I think it has all my information. Of it's funny, I haven't even been to my website. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you, I think it has all my information on there, but there's uh, prior to art, the, the prior PR IOR, the number two art ART at uh, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And what am I on Facebook? Is it Rob Pryor Official? Yeah, it's, it's Rob Pryor Official. And I'll, I'll put all that. You know, you know better I do. than I do. I do. Holy I just shit. didn't know if there was one that you utilized more than the other. Because I, uh, I, I Instagram. Instagram. I like Instagram a lot because, yeah. you Makes sense. know, because, yeah, and they don't like, like with. I hate tweeting. I hate Twitter because they give you X number of words yep. and it's like and a picture takes up most of those words. So I can I can put a picture on there and then just say and the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'll have all that in, in info in the show for all of our listeners and watchers. And uh, awesome, man. I can't awesome. thank you enough for taking time to talk to us. Dude, because thank, thank you for having me on, Hell you know, yeah. and fuck. And thank you guys for making kick ass coffee. This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Deathwish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.